Now on Grateful Rescue TV. A goat that gets the mail? We'll go down on the farm where the talented animals are more like pets. Patty Spittler's dog Mabel is diagnosed with Cushing's disease. Learn the warning signs of this serious illness. <laughs> And Sammy Terry has a special story for you, just in time for Halloween. Grateful Rescue TV. I'm here with our co-host, Patty Spittler. Hello. Hello. And sweet Mabel, oh. who's dressed for the occasion of Halloween coming oh. up. Yes. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, she loves you. Look I at that. I love her. <laughs> and Mabel, yes, she's all Mabel's dressed up with her, rescue, her pumpkin right? outfit. Mm -hmm. And it still fits, sort of. Uh, <laughs> so Mabel, as you probably know, is a rescue. Yes, I got her she in is. 2014, Aww. and she's had a wonderful, wonderful experience with all the things that we get to do here on TV. So she, <laughs> look at that. She goes, I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Bruno. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, so since she's a rescue, you have some other rescue stories to tell us about. We do. We've had a busy month at Grateful. Very busy. You know, the Aussie Doodles we had, all but two have been adopted. Okay, good. My favorite story is the Blandford family. They adopted two siblings together, and one is a baby, and the first thing they taught her was how to touch responsibly. So that, you know, how often it happens, they expect the dog to be taught how to deal with children. Right. When really the first thing you need to do is teach your children, children how to, to handle the, the dog. dog. Mabel standing up, she wants to know the next story. The next story would be about a dog named August. August is a sweet dog. I call her Patty the dog, the German Shepherd that never grew up. Aww. The puppy. She looks like a puppy, yeah. but she's four years old. And she's adorable, but she has the saddest story. Someone came up to the Muncie Animal Shelter, threw her in the lobby, and sped off. And the poor little baby went looking at the door, trying to find trying its owner. But she's in a wonderful family now. And you have one more to tell us about. I do, and and you know this young lady who adopted our honey. <gasps> honey oh, yes. was adopted by Belinda Nelson. Belinda Nelson is a wonderful adopter from Grateful Rescue. In fact, she's adopted two puppy mill dogs from us in the past. Right. And she bit Belinda on her first <laughs> day, but Belinda wasn't going to turn her back on no, her. Right. She has got the patience and the love to keep this little girl going for life. So congratulations to Honey and Belinda. That's wonderful. For a new life ahead. That's wonderful. Thank you. Those are great stories. Continuing on with the Grateful Rescue TV show, and we're going to talk to a friend of ours who we all love, Jenny DeVoe, we down on the farm. We all love Jenny DeVoe, down yeah. on the farm. She joined Teresa Mumford, a friend of ours and a lifelong friend of hers, and they shared stories about goat rescue. And? And we took a nice long walk with the goats. Got goat? I'm an animal person, and I'm here with one of my best friends, Teresa Mumford, who is also an animal person. That's what we call people who just love animals. Um, one of my favorite memories from this farm was when you got married. And after the wedding, we're here for the reception. And what was so hilarious mm -hmm. was there was a goat running around with a bucket or watering can stuck on its head. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it wouldn't have been your wedding had that not <laughs> happened. So tell me about that day and how just, you remember that too. Our other best friend, Kim, was chasing this goat around, mm -hmm. yes. trying to get that bucket off. Yeah, and I guess that was the start of the, our whole goat life here at the farm. But yeah, our reception was here, big country wedding, and we were coming from the church on horse and buggy. <laughs> and our friend was chasing around this little pygmy goat, trying to get the water can, because they always escape. And she got into the garden and got the watering can stuck on her head. I can tell you that when I wake up in the morning, if there's 
an animal that needs to be rescued is Teresa <laughs> sending me a message. So tell me a little bit about where your love of animals began and what it's doing right now in your life. Yeah, so I guess um, that started many years ago when I was young. Um, as most children get animals, I had the gerbils, the fish, the turtles, dogs, and I always wanted to take care of them, and I just knew that I was like a mother to them. So I feel like that's when it all started, you know? Yeah, and you still do that. So mm -hmm. we're out here, I don't know if you can see behind us, but we've got a donkey, we've got four goats, <laughs> and we've got uh, Gracie and Boomer uh, barking. So <laughs> that is always happening, and it's, it's just beautiful out here. You've got so many acres, and you're just, these aren't animals that you bought to decorate your farm with. These are animals that you rescued. So, and one of my friends had a situation where she could not keep these goats that were her pets. And so I called Teresa because I heard this story about these goats. One in particular who had um, an ego and was kind of running <laughs> things and escaping all the time. So his name wow. is Abe the Goda mm -hmm. and I, knew when I called Teresa and spun it just right that she would say yes. So tell me about uh, how Abe, how, how we got Abe, and then how he's fitting in here and how he changed because of yes. you de-stressed him. I mean, just tell, tell everybody a little bit about yeah. what well, it's like to give him that space back. Yeah, well, all I knew about Abe was that he was an escape artist and they couldn't keep him in any fence and he truly is and you know once they start wandering and farmers he can jump a, i mean he can he, jump a fence. yeah he can jump this fence right he got here. up into your loft in the um, barn and she doesn't even know so how. yeah so i thought well okay it may be a challenge but we'll try it um we're kind of isolated you know we're kind of isolated out here no traffic so he has been so happy but the main thing was while I was picking him up, his best friend was there, Gilbert. And that was sad to see them part. Yeah, when to take one and not the other, it was like heartbreaking. So I told Jenny about it and, and, and the owner was like, yeah, you can have him too. So went back and got, and you know, these two, those two, and then the two little pygmies I have, it was just like a family. So they immediately, he started changing immediately. He wanted to be the leader of the little herd glad to have companion and have, right. a, have a wide open space and um, lots of good food and pasture. But the main thing I think that makes a difference for these animals are that the interaction that we have with them, they really need human interaction. They're not just put them in the pasture. They're not lawn ornaments yeah, and they're um, not without um, depression right. or, or happiness. So if you nurture them, yeah. it just so happens that you actually can open up the paddock and walk, you and your husband, walk mm -hmm. down the street yeah. in the morning with a donkey off leash, <laughs> two pygmy goats, yeah. these two Nigerian goats jumping up in the air, the two, two dogs, dogs. Yeah. and you know, usually donkeys and dogs aren't the best of friends. True. And we have video that, you know, shows mm -hmm. that this is just this real symbiotic, like understanding that this is your family. Yeah. And they know you care about them. And they know that you care about the other animals too, which mm -hmm. I think is so fantastic. They respect each other. And it is a very unlikely uh, group because donkeys, as you know, uh, were made to protect um, against coyotes, protect which livestock. Which are very dog-like. Right. right, so they um, normally don't get along with dogs. But you know, these, the dogs and Stedman have a relationship. They respect each other. And they They're see happy. how you love them. And I think it's just our yeah. interaction. Yeah. Um, so having that daily interaction and I have time with each of them, I spend time with the donkey, time, they know they're gonna get that. So they're just, they're just happy. Well, there's nothing better than Grateful Rescue helping all of our creatures and creatures of the night. Now, you might be concerned with getting a werewolf at Grateful Rescue, but don't worry. Make sure you adopt a puppy, a kitty, or any of their creatures. You'll not get a werewolf. 
I keep all of those for myself. <laughs> We're back at Grateful Rescue TV with KJ, the kitty correspondent of Pet Pals, to talk about black cats. Yes, so every October, black cats get associated with Halloween. Mm -hmm. There's even the, uh, the national day every October 27th is National Black Cat Day, so we just celebrated that. Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things about black cats that um, people assume are true that are not. The biggest one, and I love to spread the word about this, uh, in many parts of the world, black cats are considered good luck. Not like here. Good luck. Yes. But that's awesome. Yes, I found out about this when I was traveling to Ireland. They have tchotchkes and keychains that say my lucky black cat. Oh, I love that. Yes, and in Japan, it's actually considered lucky for a single woman looking for love to own a black cat. Oh, I love that. Another interesting thing about black cats is uh, that it's not a breed, so people will think, Black mm -hmm. cats are a breed. Mm -hmm. Lots of breeds are black and can be black, but there is only one breed in the world that is only black. Which is? The Bombay cat. The Bombay cat. They are as black as can be, sleek, beautiful coats. Like, they are just the absolute, like, premier black cat. Not that I don't love all black wow. cats, um, but they are <laughs> amazing and they will only ever be black. That's their genetics. Uh, and then finally, Pamela, uh, talking about black cats, they are the least adopted. They're the most looked Aww. over when it comes to our shelters. Now, some of that can be, you know, people are superstitious, so uh, hopefully we cleared that up for you and single women are like, oh, I gotta get a black cat. Um, but also, I think just because they're not flashy, it's hard to get good pictures of black mm -hmm. cats, and when mm -hmm. you're in a room with a bunch of cats, the long-haired and blue-eyed and all yeah. stand out. Yep. So we always ask people to not walk past those black cats and consider going to a, a shelter or rescue or going to gratefulrescue.org. We have them too. And looking for those black cats. It's a good segue <laughs> you for can learn about KJ's both, new book. Both of my black cats, yes, and all of my cats. This is the story of how I became the kitty correspondent and um, how my experiences can help other people have a more wonderful bond, the better human cat connection. So <laughs> Grayson's a lovey kitty. He is. He is very lovey, just as we have many lovey kitties at gratefulrescue.org. We are here at the fabulous Skyline Club with General Manager Jeff Markowitz, and Jeff, what an amazing place. Look at the skyline view you have here. Oh, you know what? I take it for granted because I work here every day, but uh, yeah, every, every room in the club, we're on the 36th floor of the One America Tower down, downtown, and uh, every every room in the club has a panoramic view of downtown, and uh, it's pretty spectacular. It is spectacular. Right out the side of the window, I see the Monument Circle. And Jeff, tell us about the Charity Classic coming up. Okay, so we've been doing the Charity Classic, uh, the Invited, that's uh, the name of our company, Invited Charity Classic for 14 years. So every year we partner with a local charity. And this year we took uh, one of the best in the city, <laughs> Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary with Pamela and, and Michael. So. Uh, we're very proud. Uh, first of all, I'm a anyone that knows me knows that I'm a huge animal lover, and uh, we've we've had dogs up here, and uh, so I'm a huge. I'm on the board actually of the Grateful Rescue, and so we're excited uh, to be raising money for such a great great cause and and the things that Pamela does with Grateful Rescue are amazing so uh, so we're gonna be we give half the money to uh, Grateful Rescue and half the money to the uh, invited employee partner fund so uh, 
uh, we're very excited. It's going to be November 19th, 19th 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. We're going to have wine, cocktails, uh, celebrities, and then we're bringing in multiple chefs to be cooking each course. So throughout the night, we have we have Jack Christie from Christie Auctions. It's going to be helping me with the live auction. That's and, exciting. And we have a silent auction with all kind of great uh, items. But the, the evening, the, the food is going to be amazing. It's a four course meal with served with wine and, and a great dessert. So it's a great night to come out, relax, enjoy the crowd, network, and then enjoy the view, some great the food. Sky yeah, not to, mention, not to mention the, the view. Now, Jeff, tell me about your dogs. I have three little ones at home, uh, two Yorkies and a Morkie. So uh, I love I love animals. And we're going to have some dogs at the event as well, right? Yes, yes, we are. And Patty Spittler is going to be the MC, and and hopefully she brings Stewie with her. And uh, I think Stewie's on the list. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a fabulous night, and you want to get your tickets at gratefulrescue.org. And we're back on Grateful Rescue TV. And Patty, let's talk about Mabel. Yeah. She's got some health challenges, doesn't she? Yeah, uh, as I told you before, I adopted her in 2014. She's a rescue. And so that puts her up there because when I first got her, they said, oh, she's about three years old. And then took her to the vet. They looked at her teeth and said, she's probably about five or six. So oh. add that all up. And we think she's maybe 14, 15, somewhere around in there. Cushing disease is what we've determined she had. She's had a bunch of tests. It's funny because I looked it up. You know how you go on and you Google things? And I looked up Cushing's disease, uh, a little distended tummy, wants panting, wants to drink a lot of water, wants to eat all the time, <clears throat> has some accidents in the house which she never had before. Every single thing I read, she's going through. So uh, she's on some medication now. Apparently it happens, again, what I've learned, I'm learning all of this, it's with uh, the terrier breed is most susceptible. Uh, it's for older dogs, which she is, and she's on medication right now. So with medication, maybe another year or two, hopeful. Oh. We're hopeful. Well, so you're still going to be with us. For I don't a while. think she's in any pain. She's panting a little bit, <laughs> like mom. I pant maybe too sometimes. Maybe it's a So uh, doing the best we can, and she's still having a good life. So uh, if you suspect any of these things. Uh, again, go to your vet, find out what's going on, and maybe there's something they can do to help. I love that. Well, thank you so much thank for you. educating us on Cushing's disease. This is the good thing about doing a pet show. I learn things every day. Yes. I learn, and, I, and we get to share them. And Mabel's in good hands, isn't she? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> You've said, you know, it's after a really hard day, you come here and mm -hmm. you can diffuse and it give something to you when you give to your animals and it mm -hmm. you live in harmony out here so tell me a little bit about how you remain an animal person and how this is paradise mm -hmm. and then how you can kind of encourage others and inspire others they don't need to start collecting animals because mm -hmm. that's not really what you do it wasn't my aim to collect animals um, for me the animals are all were in need and they're therapy for me. You're right, I have a hard day and I come home and it is so calming to be with them in the barn. And it's a win-win situation because they need my interaction and I need theirs. So it's the energy, you know, it's sharing that good energy. It's a energy. symbiotic, yeah, it's a give and take. It's like it is. The, it you feels give to so them good. and they, mm -hmm. yeah, and I love it. And you can, yeah. you recognize that. And it's yeah. the same with dogs. And Pam knows because she is always rescuing dogs and cats and there's something that they realize about people who do reach out and help them and rescue them. It's like they never forget it and they know mm -hmm. when they're in a situation where they're relieved at least to leave another situation. Um, so you help give them pride and respect back. Tell me a little bit about, I know one of the things you always wanted to do was get involved in a real oh, rescue. So yes. we know about best friends out in Utah, yes. but tell me how happy you were when you finally met Pam Terhune and got yes. to be 
part of Grateful mm -hmm. Rescue. Yes, well, you're right. I've always known and supported best friends, and I read an article about uh, the Grateful Rescue being built in Muncie, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a dream come true. That was the first thing that you're like, this I is me. Elated. Yeah, because I've always wanted, I always knew that I would end up being in a rescue um, role somewhere, and, um, and so I contacted Pam. And, you know, she was like, oh, yeah, come be in our parade and the homecoming parade. And that's when it started. And then I said, I'll do anything. I'll do landscaping. I'll do the horse barn, whatever you need. And uh, I just wanted to be involved because I'm just so passionate about animal rescue. And I just wanted a role. And so she's put me in that uh, role. And I'm just so happy um, and excited about things to come and breaking ground. <laughs> well, you're very inspiring, and you're actually, um, you're like one of the founding board members, so mm -hmm. I know you're really immersed in Grateful Rescue, and and not that Grateful Rescue does farm animal stuff, but this is you, so people, tell people how they can also find you if they have questions on, hey, let's say they just want to help somebody else, right. you know, place or rehome an animal. Mm -hmm. I'm on Facebook, um, could maybe look under the Grateful Rescue site as well. Um, but yeah, it, it is a commitment when you take these animals on, that's um, what I will say. Um, but it's such a joy. And the people that you meet in rescue, there are other there are other networks. There are people that specialize in cats or birds and just And Grateful works with a lot know. of other yeah. networks too. I mean, it's almost like a, it is, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like this big web of right. people who just want to help. You hear right. a story, you want to help. So if I can't personally take it or we can't, there's somebody that can. Yeah. And so we work together. So it's just great having that network. Yep. So I think uh, we can sum up our, our love of animals as we are animal people, and there is a core belief that we have that all animals deserve respect and love and joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're born, you deserve to have a little joy in life. So I want you to know that you're very appreciated, and Pam is Thank very you. appreciated. Grateful Rescue is very appreciated. And we just want to keep encouraging people to be inspired to not turn the other way to be involved in anything. If it, if it comes across your eye line, maybe you're supposed to help. And we, we love that. So um, keep inspiring and keep rescuing. Thank you. What are you gonna Thank do you. now? I think I'm gonna go muck the barn. Would you like to help? I gotta go okay. home now. Oh. All right, see ya. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Grateful Rescue TV. And thank you, dear. Yes. Go to gratefulrescue.org, find out all about this wonderful woman's charity. She does good things. And we'll see you next time on Grateful Rescue TV. Oh, and happy Halloween. Happy no, Halloween. No treats for your pets if they're candy, right? No candy. No candy for doggies. No candy for doggies. <laughs> Good evening. I am Sammy Terry, your horror host for a very long time, since 1962. And Halloween is not only my birthday, but a special time for you. And I'd like to read you a story from a very special Halloween book. It's Halloween, Little Monster. It's here, Little Monster. Almost time to go out. Hurry, get dressed. There are creatures about. Look at you, little monster, dressed all in green. You're a Martian from space on your first Halloween. All set to go, you see things that are scary. A pirate, a witch, and a creature that's hairy. 
Don't fret, little monster. See there in the street? That's not really a ghost. It's a kid in a sheet. Shine your light, little monster. Let's head down the street. We'll knock on some doors and say, trick or treat. What, little monster? You heard something howl. It's Halloween night when spooky things prowl. But you shouldn't be nervous. Your papa is here. And together we're brave. There's nothing to fear. See that witch, little monster. She's offering cups of warm, bubbly worm juice. Yum! Drink it up! What's that, little monster? Something scary swooshed by. Oh no, it's a vampire! A big, creepy guy! Hold your bag tight and don't make a fuss. Now let's run past him. Woo! He didn't get us. You hear a weird noise. You're right, it sounds strange. Oh no, look at that. Zombies in chains. Quick, walk like a zombie without a brain stem. Oh, they won't bother us if we act just like them. First zombies, now ghosts, no shivers and shakes. Oh, I see why you're brave, spider cupcakes. There's one final house across from the park, the scariest one yet, all spooky and dark. What? On the porch? Oh, a goblin is perched. He might try to grab us with a quick surprise lurch. The yard's full of grades. This could be tough. Shall we trick or treat here? Will you be brave enough? Come along, little monster. Be strong, just like me. It won't be so scary. Follow Papa, you'll see. Boo! Yikes! Little monster, that gave me a fright. Your Papa got scared this Halloween night. Are you laughing, little monster? Because Papa screamed. I'm glad you've had fun on your first Halloween. Oh, this was a wonderful book that you should read. It's Halloween, little monster, and it's special for you. <laughs>